Hi, Roger Margolis here at AI 2019. And I'm here with Eric Gardner. He's Director of Sales Enabling at the AI Products Group at Intel. Welcome, Eric. Thank you, good morning. Um, AI is such a big, complex you know, topic to cover. What do you think the biggest challenge you're facing at Intel right now? Well, I'd say personally the biggest challenge in my role in sales enabling is just the onslaught of customers who are interested in adopting AI. So it's the biggest challenge really is time management and work-life balance, to be quite honest. Uh, so I spend a lot of time meeting with customers who are really interested in figuring out how to get some of that AI uh, secret sauce in their company. Uh, and I also spend a lot of time enabling our sales teams to be uh, self-sufficient and go off and help more customers and scale in that way. Mm -hmm. So when you talk to those customers and go to the next step, like what's the first obstacle that they usually need to overcome? And, and what, what advice can you give them to help achieve what they're looking for? Yeah, one of the big first obstacles that a lot of customers encounter is just the talent gap, uh, especially in deep learning. We know that deep learning data scientists are fairly expensive and there's not very many of them. So if you are going down the deep learning path, that poses a challenge. So either you open the checkbook uh, to, you know, bring people in to outsource, or if you have the time, and what I like to recommend is to build up your existing developers internally uh, using all the great coursework on Coursera, Andrew Yang's courses, and many others that are out there. Maybe even well. O'Reilly. Maybe even <laughs> O'Reilly, attending conferences, tutorials, uh, lots of great ways to learn. And the developers, that we find, are very eager to jump in on an exciting new area and challenge, which is AI. Mm -hmm. Do you find that they're able to get traction, the existing developers? I do, yeah. Um, and quite honestly, you know, AI is 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 I mentioned is sort of a, a secret sauce. There's there's no rocket science to it, really. Um, you know, it does take a lot of learning on the fly and learning as you go to really be uh, attuned at tuning all of the hyperparameters, selecting the right topologies. But we find that developers are getting traction through all the great training resources they have. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good to hear. And what kind of advice can you share about integrating AI into existing platforms? I think most companies, that's what they're going to end up doing is trying to get things to work in their existing digital presence. Yeah, we like to use the analogy of kind of Wi-Fi. For a while, their Wi-Fi was kind of a big deal. It was a big topic, a hot topic, but now Wi-Fi is pervasive in everything, and that's really how we see AI going. Um, quite frankly, a lot of our customers who are early adopters of AI typically have some analytics infrastructure already, whether it be Spark or Hadoop-based infrastructure, and they want to use that existing infrastructure and integrate some AI so they can add in, if it's Spark, MLlib, or uh, Big DL libraries that seamlessly integrate with that existing infrastructure. If it's other infrastructure and they're using one of the popular open source frameworks, TensorFlow, MXNet, PyTorch, et cetera, uh, making sure that they use the Intel optimized versions of those so that they can get actually good performance on their existing CPU infrastructure is what I recommend. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that you should be doing, but there's probably a lot of pitfalls and things that you should be avoiding. What would you say about that? Yeah, I'd say maybe the biggest pitfall is just given how hot AI is, a lot of people get the mandate, go figure out this AI thing, bring some of that AI secret sauce into our company and boost our stock price. And in reality, uh, when customers look at all the opportunities to solve problems or pursue new challenges, um, many of them don't involve any AI whatsoever. And those projects often deliver the highest ROI. They have the most value and they're the simplest to solve. So I'd say go solve those problems first, pick the low hanging fruit, um, and then you know, once you get to the next stage down, go, go look at what AI projects can really drive the maximum ROI for your business. So uh, yeah, I, I agree, picking the right problem and, and the right tool for that problem. So one of the things, if you do figure out that AI is one of it, is ethics, fairness, bias, yeah. those kind of things. What kind of advice can you offer to people in, in factoring that into their decisions. It's such an important part of the process and it's one that's sometimes overlooked. And I like to advise customers that you want to think about these things upfront before you dive in with both feet into the rabbit hole because if there's something in your blind spot from a legal, ethical, social perspective that you haven't thought of, it's much easier to plan for it ahead of time and try to mitigate it than it is once you're in the throes of dealing with that problem. Uh, and there's lots of great um, talks here at O'Reilly and a lot of the AI conferences, in fact, online about applying AI ethically and responsibly. And to me, it's super important. We don't want to generate uh, AI algorithms that unfairly advantage or disadvantage certain people or that have unintended consequences. 
that's great, thanks.